These six setups were used by the pro player Henry to win the Madden MCS Ultimate Kickoff Tournament, bringing his total career winnings to over $500,000. So today we're taking a deep dive into all six of these setups to understand exactly how these plays outsmarted the best Madden players in the world. And along the way, I'll also reveal three key concepts that Henry used throughout this tournament run that we can all learn from to instantly become better Madden players. In the Ultimate Kickoff quarterfinals, Henry faced a lockdown man coverage scheme from Jack Oregon, who is running the nickel over formation with two edge threats and three medium route KOs. The game started out rough for Henry. Not only did he have almost no time to throw before the edge rushers were in his face, but whenever he did get a throw off, the medium route KO ability would light up and force a knockout. Henry needed to find a way to attack this ridiculous man coverage, which brings us to setup number one out of the play bunch trail in the gun bunch formation. This setup is perfect for attacking man coverage, not only because of the trail route from the tight end, but also because Henry is utilizing the outside apprentice ability on both outside receivers so that he can put them on C routes. Now, this is something that my SpruceGoose.gg members have known for over a month now, but the outside apprentice C route is the best man-beating route in the game, which is why you saw Henry put it on the field on almost every play. With the middle bunch receiver on a streak to clear out space, Henry motioned out his outside bunch receiver and on this play just had to read his three man-beating routes. Now, as we watch this play develop, there are two huge takeaways. First, Henry had his tight end wide open over the middle, meaning the trail route successfully beat its man coverage. But the bigger takeaway is that the C route from the outside receiver got over the top of the cornerback, and if not for Jack Oregon's user helping out, it would have been an easy touchdown. Now, since Henry missed the read on the tight end, he ended up taking a sack, but this play was critical for setting the stage for what would come next. A few minutes later, with just over 30 seconds remaining in the first half and looking for more ways to attack this man coverage scheme, Henry started off audibling to the gun tight formation. Gun tight is full of plays with corner routes, which in Madden 23 are the best routes for attacking man coverage. Henry hit a short side corner route on back-to-back -back plays to get into the red zone, but after two quick defensive stops, Henry found himself in a crucial third and 10, and that's when he went to the play bench switch for setup number two. The streak on this play is just a clear out route, but the drag, the corner route, and the C route all have the potential to beat their man coverage. After he snapped the ball, the C route got over top the cornerback once again, and and this time, Henry was able to hit him for the huge touchdown to end the half. Now, this game was far from over, however, and in the second half, Jack Oregon made a really smart defensive adjustment to counter Henry's C route by putting his cornerback on an outside third assignment. However, this is where Henry showed us the first key concept that we can all learn from, which is adaptability. When Jack Oregon made an adjustment to take away the C routes, Henry adapted and countered with a brilliant adjustment of his own. On third and eight, Henry came out in the play bunch trail, and for the only time in the entire entire tournament, he left his outside receiver on the post route. With the cornerback playing in an outside third, the post route ran to the deep middle of the field completely unguarded, and Henry hit the easy touchdown to put the game away. Now, Henry's semifinal game was against Datboy, who ran a stellar defense built around exotic cover three and cover six looks in the nickel 3-3 formation, while his two edge threat rushers provided crazy pressure off the edge. Henry would have to prove he was comfortable attacking different zone coverage looks, and he did exactly that in setup number three out of the play verticals. With this setup, where the only adjustment is to put the running back on a streak, Henry is setting out four vertical routes with the goal of attacking the seams. Statboy was double mabled on the right side, which took away the outside wheel, but as a result, there was only a single linebacker left in a hook curl over the middle. The linebacker was brought inside by the crosser, leaving the tight end wheel completely unguarded. Now jumping ahead to the third quarter, Henry made an incredible play that showed off the second key concept that takes his game to the next level, and that is improvisation. This play on third and two got completely bagged by Datboy's defense, but Henry was quick to think on his feet. During the play, seeing that every route was covered, Henry instantly remembered the playmaker feature where you can redirect the receiver closest to your quarterback by pointing and holding the right stick in any direction you want them to run. In this case, Henry playmakered his receiver up to send him into open space, allowing him to pick up the huge first down. Two plays later on third and 10, Henry cooked up one of his best dots of the tournament with setup number four out of the play mesh post. 
first, it was a lot of adjustments, but for this setup, he put the outside receiver on a C route, he put the tight end on a smart routed out route, and then he motioned out the post. By pushing the zones deep with the streak and holding them outside with the out route, the post was able to get into a perfect spot just between the zones, and Henry used freeform passing to place the ball behind his receiver to keep it away from the defender in the middle of the field. Clutch plays like this led Henry to a convincing win over Dat Boy, but up next will be Henry's toughest challenge yet. In the championship game, we had a heavyweight matchup as Henry squared off against Noah, who has two MCS titles of his own. Noah ran a ridiculously tough defense out of the dollar 3 2 formation, which was primarily based around the Blitz DB Fire 2. And because of this stifling defense, Henry found himself in a high pressure fourth and eight situation late in the first half. This is where Henry turned to setup number five, which was once again out of the play verticals. Because his quarterback was equipped with the threat detector ability, he could see that the slot cornerback on the right side was blitzing, and since Noah was typically playing in a cover two shell, he knew the outside cornerback would stay outside in the flat. That meant Noah's user would be the only player covering the right middle of the field, so Henry sent out a running back wheel route combined with a smart routed in route, knowing that Noah's user could only guard one of them. After the snap, Noah committed to the wheel route just long enough that Henry was able to hit the in route over the middle to keep the chains moving. The game went back and forth throughout the second half, but with under two minutes left, Henry found himself down by three points and looking to put together a championship winning drive. On second and 12, he showed off his mastery of the third key concept, which is awareness, which on this play took the form of his incredible pocket presence. One of the toughest things to learn in Madden is the instinct to step up in the pocket rather than continuing to drop back after the snap. If Henry had continued dropping back, not only would the defensive end had gotten to him before he could get the throw off, but Noah's user would have been able to continue guarding the running back instead of breaking off to defend the QB scramble. This insanely skilled movement in the pocket allowed Henry to hit his running back in the flat and then rumble down the sidelines to get himself in field goal range. Now Noah still had a three point lead and three timeouts, meaning this game was far from over. After more great defense from Noah on first and second down, Henry made the play of the tournament on third and seven with setup number six. Using the play mesh post, Henry put his solo receiver on a C route, put his middle bunch receiver on a streak, and put his motioned over tight end on an in route. Before snapping the ball, the threat detector ability showed him that only Noah's user was on a blitz assignment, meaning he should have enough time in the pocket for his routes to develop. That's exactly what happened, and the C route on the left side got in the perfect spot to attack Noah's cover two shell, and Henry freeform passed the ball to the outside so his receiver could haul in the catch on the one yard line. On the very next play, he punched it into the end zone with a QB sneak, and while Noah did put together an impressive drive to nearly steal the title away from him, Henry's defense came up clutch to stop Noah just short of the end zone. With Noah out of timeouts, the clock ticked down to zero, and Henry clinched his third straight belt to truly cement himself as one of the greatest Madden players of all time. Now, using Henry's setups will without a doubt win you more games, but there are so many other little details that go into our development as Madden players. So for more tips to keep improving, I highly recommend checking out this video on my 20 pro tips that every Madden player should know. And if you watch that, I'm almost certain that you're going to learn something new.